We use all the time Three, first name. Two, Unless you... One, speed. Well, gentlemen, you have to be somewhat impressed with uh, the accolades the film is getting. Uh, I think nearly every critic has put it on his or her 10 best film list. Uh, you have Golden Globe nominations, and I'm almost positive you will have Oscar nominations. So uh, with, with that being uh, said and established, uh, I'd like to start with you, Sydney, and uh, from this point of view, uh, even if it were a documentary, there would be things that probably the person who lived the story would say, well, it wasn't quite like that, or uh, it should have been this emphasis rather than that. So looking at the film, if you could change any one or two things, what, what would it be? Well, if I, if I made, if I, if I went through that process you suggested, if I did uh, tell you what I'd like to change, I might make a change that suited my ego and hurt the film badly, which is why we really, in the end, after working very hard in the, in the pre-production phase, finally decided not to go to the shooting because we feared that we would, we would unnerve uh, these gifted people who made the film. Uh, uh, the film, to me, is terribly authentic. Uh, from a personal point of view, which I try to keep separate uh, from what the film is, uh, it's, it's not all of me. What is on the screen about me, those parts, are, I, are true. True uh, in spirit or uh, most of the time historically exact. Uh, it's a kind of heightened reality. It isn't, re it isn't a, a real person. The screen is enormous. The, on the screen, an individual dwarfs events. In real life, events dwarf us. Uh, so while it is a depiction of me on the screen, I, I, it's not, I don't think of it as me. I know who I am, and, and that's separate, and that's, uh, and that's my life as I live it now. Um, but the film uh, is authentic. And I, uh, if I ch as I said, if I wanted to change something, maybe I would, I would wish for, from a fairly personal point of view, and it might have hurt the film, that some of the softer sides of me were shown. But uh, that's purely an ego uh, uh, answer and has nothing to do with the integrity of the film, which I think stands on its own. One of the scenes that I found myself almost just clutching the, the armrest was the, the scene where uh, they're taking you prisoner and they have the gun to your head and it just seems like in the next instant that they'll be blowing your head off too. Now, uh, if that is an accurate depiction, um, dur during that time, Sydney, did you just think, why in the world did I ever choose this profession? Why am I here? No, all I thought was we're dead. I don't think you have, I mean, I, don't, I know we've read about people's lives flashing before them as they're drowning. Uh, none of that happened with me. Uh, I, I mean, the, to the best of my recollection, all I thought of at that point was, we're finished. And it wasn't, why am I here? Because you didn't have any choice at that point. It would have been silly to say, oh, brother, I should have taken that plane out. All you can do now is to prepare yourself for what seems inevitable, even as he was pleading and cajoling and begging them to believe that we weren't Americans and we were only French journalists there to record their victory uh, and, and not their enemies and they should spare us and so forth. We didn't believe he was going to succeed. We thought we were dead. And I think, I mean, at least in my case, when you think you're going, that's going to happen to you, I think you prepare yourself for it. And I had some totally irrational thoughts, and they had nothing to do with my life flashing. And I thought of my children, but not, oh my God, why didn't I do something else? I thought of them and how I would miss them. And I pulled out a good luck charm that my older daughter had given me. Uh, and I made a, a, f uh, a remark in false bravado about that to John Swain, the London Sunday Times. I said, John, look, nothing can happen to us. I've got Jessica's silk rose here. And he thought I was crazy. And of course, we were all crazy at that point. He would say anything. Uh, and my irrational thought was, since they're going to kill us, I'm not going to lose my dignity. I'm not going to crawl or beg or weep or lose my personhood. Now, that's really a dumb thought, because if you want to live, which is terribly important, you should do anything, almost anything, I would think. Uh, uh, 
to survive. And so, the, as I said, I don't think you have any rational thoughts so that your life passes before you. At least I didn't. Pran, what was it like for you, uh, because there's been an interim now where you have uh, come to the United States, you make your livelihood as a photographer with the New York Times, and what was it like for you to have to go back through all that horrible stuff? Well, uh, you know, we have been through that uh, kind of very bad thing since uh, the war began, and also four years with the Cambodian communists. I think uh, when I come to work in New York, I didn't see anything worse than, than what I used to be. So it made me uh, uh, feel that uh, I had the worst thing I never had before. So compared to New, New York, even uh, you will find some difficulties sometimes, but it's still it's not very hard for me. What, uh, how are your children reacting to the film? Because I'm sure they're seeing things in the movie and learning things that they never knew about you before. That uh, Soraya, they keep asking me all more questions, and I always explain. I never stop explain to all uh, my children if they have free time beside his homework, if they come and ask me all the questions. And uh, you know, I want to tell you that uh, this movie is uh, made my youngest son is terrible. He cannot watch because when he left during the final evacuation by American embassy, and he was uh, nearly three years old, so he didn't know anything about the life of Cambodian people during the war and after the war. So when he see this movie, it made him cry all the time. And so, but uh, I have to explain, this is a, uh, the real story, what I went through, what the Cambodian people been through. So, but he still don't want to see. He doesn't want to see that, uh, uh, you know, the lies being uh, 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 mean, uh, being uh, in. I would say that uh, is really get. Uh, humiliated by another group, you know. Yes. And well, it is a powerful film, and uh, uh, you can't say that you enjoyed it. I mean, enjoy maybe isn't the word, but you certainly appreciate the film, and I'm very, very happy to have had the chance to see it, and especially happy to have had the chance to meet both of you. Thank you, Sydney. Thank pleasure. you very much. Nice, nice to meet you, Bob. Thank you. Pleasure. Sydney, if you could change any one or two things about the film, what would it be? At the time when you were being held prisoner with a gun to your head, any moment they could have, and we thought they probably would blow your head off, what were your thoughts? Were you thinking, why did I ever choose this profession? What in the world am I doing here? Pran, for you, what was it like getting back into this and having to relive all the horrible things that happened to you in Cambodia? Your children must be learning things about you through the movie they never knew before. How are they handling it? Okay, let me now give you just reactions.
Okay. Thank you.